everybody, it's Michelle again, and yesterday I read a short story by Arnold Stein from The Haunting Hour that Lacey brought home to me, and when I saw it, I was so excited because I used to read all these Arnold Stein books when I was in the middle school and the high school, and I really like short, scary stories, and yesterday I read The Bad Babysitter, and that was kind of creepy, so I wanted to read another one. All right, it starts out with an introduction about, I don't know if it's, I guess it's got to do with the story, but it's not like part of the story. But anyway, the introduction is, go away, Max. I don't have time to talk now. No, really. Max, give me a break. Go away and let me write. I'll talk to you when I'm finished, okay? Max, please. Sorry, readers. Max is my imaginary friend, and he is driving me crazy today. Do you think I'm too old to have an imaginary friend? Yes, so do I. So someone should tell that to Max. Max, get away from my keyboard. I'm going to write a story about a boy who has an imaginary friend. A very dangerous imaginary friend. No, you can't help me. Go away. I mean it, Max. Get away from the computer. Go away. Go away. All right. David turned away from his computer and stared across the bedroom at Sean. Why are you lying there like a dead fish, he asked. Come over here. We'll play a game. Sean groaned and pulled the blankets up to his chin. I don't feel too well. Boo-hoo, David said. Get over here, Sean, or else... The bedroom door swung open and David's mom stepped in. She was short with a little chubby and a little chubby like David with tight ringlets of black hair that bobbed on her head when she walked. Hey, Mom, how's it going? David asked. She didn't answer. She leaned down and spread her palm over Sean's narrow forehead. Sean didn't look anything like David. He was very thin with a mop of straight blonde hair that always hung in his eyes. Your head is cool, she said softly. I don't think you have a fever. Bill Travis's head, Sean said. He's sick too. Mom groaned and rolled her eyes, but she reached across the bed and spread her hand out again. No temperature. He's fine, she said. Sean isn't that sick, David said. He's probably faking. You know, he's only, he always wants attention. His mom straightened the blankets. She turned to the window. What on earth did you open that, she asked. It's freezing cold in here. Travis said he was hot, Sean replied. Travis made me do it. Mom frowned at Sean. I'm a little worried about you, she said, pressing her hands to her waist. You're 12 years old, Sean. It's really time you got rid of your imaginary friend. She crossed the room and shut the window. Then she straightened some books on David's bookshelf. Then she fluffed Sean's pillow. Hey, Mom, what's for dinner? David asked. But she was out the bedroom door, closing it behind her. Why does she say that about me? Travis demanded as soon as the door was shut. Why does she say I have to go? Don't worry, Sean replied. I won't get rid of you. David stood up and crossed to the foot of Sean's bed. You should get rid of Travis. You're worrying Mom with all that invisible friend stuff, he said. Why don't you mind your own business, Sean snapped. You are not the boss, and you cannot tell me what to do. Travis let out a long, loud yawn. Boring, he said. It's totally boring lying around here doing nothing. Let's sneak out. Sean sat up in bed. He brushed his hair away from his eyes. Sneak out? But it's late. We could get in major trouble. Travis grinned at him. Only if we're caught. David watched Sean pull on jeans and a sweatshirt. Don't listen to Travis. He's always getting you into a mess. You're making a big mistake, he said. Your face is a big mistake, Sean replied. He pulled open the window, threw his leg over the sill, and he climbed out into the night. David didn't want to go out, but he had pulled on his coat and followed Sean. Maybe I can help him get out of trouble, he thought. They stepped into a cold, moonless night. The wind swirled around the houses and howled through the trees. Somewhere down the block, a dog barked. Dead leaves scuttled around their legs and crackled beneath their shoes. I don't like being out this late, David said, shivering. I think we should go back. Travis doesn't want to go back, Sean replied. Travis is bored. They stopped in front of the Harper's house on the next block. The driveway light sent a rectangle of yellow over the side of the garage. They saw a tall ladder and a stack of paint cans. Half the garage wall had been painted yellow. Let's help paint the garage, Travis said. No way, Sean protested. If Mr. Harper catches us, why are you always so scared, Travis sneered. Poor little Sean baby is frightened. 
Don't you ever want to have any fun? Sean turned and started up the driveway. Okay, let's paint, he said. David ran after Sean. No, please, he begged. Please stop. But Sean pried open the paint cans. He picked up a brush and dipped it into the can of black paint. Then he painted a big smiley face on the garage wall. He and Travis played tic-tac-toe on the wall in green paint. Then Sean wrote Travis's name in big red letters. They giggled and danced as they painted. But, as, but they stopped giggling when a car pulled up the driveway and the twin beams of the headlights rolled over them. Sean and Travis froze for just a second. Then they tossed the paintbrushes to the ground and took off, vanishing through the hedge at the side of the yard. David's dad jumped out of the car and stormed over the, to the garage. Even in the dark, David could see the angry look on his face. It's not my fault, David cried. Really, Dad, Sean did all the painting. I just followed him. I begged him to stop. Dad glared furiously at David. His dark mustache flared up and down as he gritted his teeth. This has got to stop, David. Your mother will be so disappointed in you. But it wasn't my idea, David protested. You have got to believe me. It was Sean. Why don't you ever blame him? After school the next day, David followed Sean out of the building. Low clouds hung overhead, threatening the snow. The ground was hard and frosty. David pulled his parka hood down over his head. I have to go home straight away, David grumbled. I've been grounded because of last night. Travis wants to go home a different way today, Sean said, just for fun. David squinted at him suspiciously. Which different way, he asked. He wants to go over to the old railroad trestle, Sean said, stepping away. No way, David cried. It is kind of dangerous, Sean agreed. The wood planks are all rotting. The trestle could collapse at any minute. Travis glared at Sean and shook his head. Why are you always the biggest chicken on earth? Don't you ever get tired of being such a wimp? I'm not a wimp. I'll show you, replied Sean. Fat snowflakes started to fall as they stepped up to the old wooden trestle. It had once been a railroad bridge over a wide creek, but the creek had dried up and no trains had come through town in many years. Many of the boards were cracked and broken. Others had fallen away, leaving huge gaping holes. The whole trestle trembled in the wind. David's hood had fallen back. He brushed snow from his bushy black hair. You can't do this, he told Sean. No one is allowed on this bridge. It's too dangerous. But Travis says, Sean started. Travis is imaginary, David screamed. Please, just this once, don't listen to him. He grabbed Sean by the shoulder. Shape up, he cried. You can't keep listening to Travis. He's going to kill you. He is going to kill us both. Sean shook himself free and ran to follow Travis onto the wooden trestle. As he started to make his way across the planks, they creaked and squeaked. A piece of the wooden railing broke off in Sean's hand. The bridge trembled in a strong gust of wind. The fat snowflakes had already left a powdery cover on the wooden planks. I can't watch, David told himself. His whole body was trembling, his eyes shut, and then opened them with a gasp when he heard a long cracking sound. Sean was nearly to the other side, but David could see the trestle shaking hard, see the planks giving way on both sides. It's collapsing, he realized. Waving his arms, David leaped onto the trestle. Hurry, he shouted. Sean, hurry, move! David chased after him, shouting at the top of his lungs. Crack, 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 crack. The planks were popping off, dropping to the snowy ground below. Sean dove to the other side. He slid on the slippery grass. Safe. David stumbled onto the trembling wood trestle, his foot caught in a hole where a plank had fallen away. Crack. More planks fell. David gripped the railing. He struggled to stay on his feet as the old bridge swayed wildly from side to side. Two more planks dropped out, nearly under his feet. He jumped back, gripping the shaking rail. I'm trapped, he called. Get help, please. I'm trapped here and it's going to fall. He squinted through the falling snow to the far side of the trestle. Sean, where are you? Sean, I need help. A few seconds later, David heard the sirens. Three red fire trucks squealed to a stop at one end of the trestle. Yellow uniformed firefighters, their faces grim, jumped down from the trucks. Some of them began to make a rope harness to pull David to safety. Gripping the rail, David listened in panic to the trestle creaking and cracking. Hurry, please, hurry, he thought, watching the firefighters work. Then he saw his dad jogging over the snow. His face was red. Puffs of steam floated from his mouth as he ran. David, he shouted over the voices of the firefighters. I don't believe this. 
Dad, it's not what you think, David shouted back. It wasn't my idea at all. I was trying to rescue Sean. You've got to believe me this time. You've got to. David paced angrily back and forth in his room. He kicked the wall. He pounded his fist against the closet door. I may spend the rest of my life in this room, he complained to Sean. I'm grounded forever and it's all your fault. Sean didn't reply. David bumped up to him and shoved his face into Sean's. Travis is the troublemaker. This is all his fault. He has got to go, Sean. Do you hear me? He's dangerous. He's really dangerous. Your imaginary friend has to go now. Sean sighed and shrugged his shoulders. Yeah, I guess, he said. You're probably right, but what can I do? Sean turned to Travis, who was sitting on the windowsill, staring out the open window at the moon. Let's get out of here, Travis said. Okay, I'm going to run out of time. Um, this is, no, wait, no, I'm not. Okay, I thought I was a lot left, but it's not. All right. A few minutes later, they were out in the frosty night, their breath misting in front of them. They gazed at the fishing pond behind the park where Travis had led them. A thin layer of ice gleamed under the yellow moonlight. A thousand little cracks stretched over the silvery surface. Water splashed where the delicate ice had broken away. What are we doing here, David asked, zipping his parka as high it would go. This is crazy. Then he caught the frightened look on Sean's face. What was happening? Sean was backing up, backing toward the pond. Travis, stop it, Sean cried. He turned to David. Stop him, David. Travis, he's forcing me into the lake. Stop, David cried. This ice is too thin. It can't hold anyone. Why are you doing this, Sean cried. He staggered back. One foot landed on the crackling surface. I'm taking over, Travis said. I'm tired of being the imaginary one. From now on, I'm going to be the real one, Sean. And you will be my imaginary friend. No, Sean Well, You can't do that. I will. Just Im You're just imaginary. Not anymore, Travis sneered. I'm taking over now, and it's time for you to go. Goodbye, Sean. He grabbed Sean by the shoulders, grunting and crying out. The two of them wrestled onto the surface of the ice. David opened his mouth in a shrill scream as the ice cracked. Like a broken mirror, it split into dozens of jagged shards. Still wrestling, Sean and Travis plunged into the dark water. No, no, David chanted, shivering in terror. No, please. And then he forced himself to move. He dove onto the ice and he threw himself into the open hole into the frozen water. His heart thudded in his chest and he searched under the surface for Sean. David's body started to turn numb in the icy water. He couldn't feel his arms or his legs and he couldn't breathe. He forced himself to keep searching, but the darkness surrounded him. He couldn't see a thing in the inky blackness. He thrashed out, searching for Sean with his hands, reaching out frantically, groping for Sean in the icy darkness. He stayed down until his chest felt ready to explode. Then he burst back to the surface, choking and gasping for air. Where are you, Sean? Where did you go? Help, somebody. Oh, help. David is, a very, is very lucky that a neighbor heard his shouts. Dr. Klein said he was very lucky to be pulled out. Another few seconds and he would have drowned. David's dad shook his head sadly. He turned to David in the hospital bed. How did this happen, he said. How did you fall into the pond? I... I tried to save them, Dad, David replied. Sean and Travis, are they okay? I tried to save them, but I couldn't see them. It was too dark, too dark. Try to rest, David, Dr. Klein said. He walked David's dad out into the hall. Who are Sean and Travis, the doctor asked. David's dad tugged at his mustache. He let out a long, weary sigh. Sean and Travis are David's imaginary friends, he said. He said. Dr. Klein's eyes went wide. Really? Yes, ever since Dad's mom and I divorced, ever since he moved away, she moved away, David imagines that she's still there. He thinks he still talks to her, and he spends all his time talking to these two imaginary boys. David's dad took a deep breath. I've tried to get him help, Dr. Klein. I just don't know what to do. The two men stood staring at each other. From back in the room, they could hear David's voice. Sean! Travis, look at all the trouble you've got me in. You went too far this time. You landed me in the hospital. Boring, David heard Travis's reply. Let's bust out of this place. Come on, David. No one is looking. Run. Okay. Well, that wasn't as long as the other ones, but wow. I gotta go. I'm about to run out of time. Bye.